Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, this is Sunday, April 19th, and it's 8.49 p.m. And I decided I needed to share a couple of messages here in Dawn's email that are from two ladies that don't normally have a message in there. So let me begin this first one there's actually two of them and one is one sentence it says what is about to take place in this country will bring the people to their knees in repentance that was dated april 15th 2020 could that be the rapture? Maybe. Daughter of the Lord. Um, you might want to check out Steve Fletcher. And I know he's been wrong a lot. But this one that has the picture on it that's just black with the numbers. 117. Now... Some of you may have received that number and wondered, what is 117? And some have said, well, it's a rapture code. I, I'm i not familiar if I remembered it. Or, I mean, if I heard of it, I forgot. <laughs> so check it out. He's showing different channels and their titles using rapture code 117. The 117th day of the year happens to be April the 26th. And he tells why, well, I watched two of his. Uh, I guess it was the one just before or just after that. And it was talking about four channels also that, we're saying the same thing about the same date. And it has to do with the 117th day of the year. So you might want to check out his channel and what he has said lately. All right, because he's using other channels to make his point, not something that he pulled out of the Bible or whatever. And I just think he's been a great watchman, always watching, could it be ne this next feast day? Could it be this next full moon? What's going on now in the next week or in the next week? And it keeps people on their toes or else it just turns them off. And... I kind of go back and forth with him, but yet I'm subscribed, and this is very compelling stuff he's putting up, and they're very short. Now, so she says, what is about to take place in this country will bring the people to their knees in repentance. Okay, that was April 15th. And it was given to daughter of the Lord. That is spelled all in one word. And then she's got, it says, message received in prayer on 1720 dot dot dot. So I'm thinking, did she not write the year? Was this... Actually, the 1st of July last year? I don't know. Because it says 20 dot dot dot, which, which has me wondering what year it was. So she says, what is about to take... Well, wait a minute. Maybe that was the title. Okay, now that's that doesn't make sense. Did she get it on April 15th or put it up on April? It just says, message received in prayer on 1-7. But the first sentence is, 
What is about to take place in this country will bring the people to their knees in repentance. Some shall turn from their wicked ways, while others will spiral deeper towards hell. You shall know the timing of these events by the sound of the war drum that beats in the hearts of men. All of the players stand at the ready, seeking vengeance. So little time is left, for I am is knocking at the door. Seek me, and ye shall find rest. Then she puts, or it's in, oh, that's an asterisk. Saw in a dream the night before receiving this message, dot, 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 I was attacked by a demon while reading the Bible, Daniel chapter 7, which is the vision of the four beasts. And that says, Warrior Woman 1, I'm sorry, 11, 11. That is a little confusing the way she typed it up. But anyway, I'm going to move on. Take it to the Lord. I think it's the wording that matters, not who got it and when. All right. I just didn't catch that until just now. Um... Okay, this is called, Do You Know Jesus? Received April 16th, 2020 by Elizabeth Marie. Let's do what Jesus said in Matthew 9, 37-38. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, Pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Please share with others this message that I received on April 13th, 2020. Maybe she sent it to Dawn on April 16th. I hope Dawn is okay. It's not like her to not make it real clear. Do you know me? This is in quotes. Do you know me? Do you not know that I am the Savior of the world? I came to make a way for you to know God our Father. I am the gate, the entrance, for you to enter into his presence. Through my death on the cross, I paid the price for your sins. You only need to receive and believe this free gift of salvation to enter into my kingdom. I am here just waiting at the door of your heart, knocking to come in. Do you not hear me there? Open the door and take that leap of faith with me. Put your trust in me and let me show you that I am here for you. You are not alone. Once you accept my work on the cross, you will be born again with my spirit. I will then release my peace 
that passes all understanding. While your world is being turned upside down, I will be your rock, your steady, solid rock that you can count and rely on. Come to me today. I am here with open arms. The one true Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. Now the scriptures put with this are these. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. Matthew eleven twenty nine through 30 See, the gift of salvation is free in that it doesn't cost you money. But there is a burden that comes with it. Obeying his commandments to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. As you get to know him more and more through his word, you learn the things we're supposed to do and the things we're not supposed to do. He teaches us how to pray by saying to the apostles, Pray like this, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us, Lord, for our sins. And we will forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That was meant to be like an outline. We can say it word for word. I do. But it is it means to start your praying with praise and worship before you ask for your daily bread or your needs to be met. Then you ask for forgiveness of your sins that you did that day or the day before or that you might do if you prayed in the morning then it was for the day before, whatever. I say it at night. And then you say, and I forgive those who trespassed or sinned against me. We have to forgive others if we expect to be forgiven. And lead me not into temptation. So you're asking him to protect you. You could say that's where you say your spiritual warfare pray prayers. And then you praise and worship him once again. All right, moving on. I didn't mean to get into all that, but that's what he's talking about. You do have a little burden. There is, a, you have to walk on the straight and narrow and not live in the world. So it's a burden, especially when people leave you and abandon you and say, man, you just ain't yourself anymore and you, they leave you. Well, it hurts, but it you get over it. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. Revelation 3.20 Literally, when you allow Jesus into your heart, whatever you do, whether you're taking a shower or eating dinner or going to bed. He's right there with you. Okay? For by grace you have been saved. Did I say that was Revelation 3.20? I hope so. 
For by grace you have been saved through belief. Well, it's supposed to be through faith. This is, I don't know what what Bible they're using. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Because even the demons believe in Jesus and tremble at the very name of him. Belief, faith, it is kind of the same word. But faith, I think, is stronger than believing. I can believe that uh, I don't want to go political, but I can believe that my light switch will come on when I flip it up. The light will come on. But do I have faith that it will happen? Not really exactly the same thing, is it? Faith is more of a supernatural. Anyway, I'm getting tired. I don't want to ramble. I'll move on. Maybe some of y'all can put a comment in there about what do you think? Is, is there a difference between belief and faith? Okay, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. That's Ephesians 2.8. It goes on to say, let's see, For it is by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. In other words, we cannot work our way into heaven. You have to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. You can't just say, I'm a good person. I'm doing good works. I love people. And I love God. And then think you're going to heaven. You have to accept Jesus as your Savior. Okay, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. See, there it is again, John 3, 3. If you confess with your mouth, that the Lord Jesus, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. I think that's one of those deathbed things. You can't, you can't just say that. And then go on about your life living like you were. But if you're in a horrible situation and you remembered this and you hadn't yet made the decision to make Jesus your Savior, but you all of a sudden confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, I do believe that you died and rose again from the dead. Please be my Savior. Save me. You will be saved. The Bible says so. But if that's all you say, and then you go on to live your life like you want, and you never repent again, it does not work that way. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. Now, I like that version. Submit to him. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Now, here's a salvation prayer. I read it. I think it's, it's a pretty good one. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge to you that I am a sinner and I am sorry for my sins and the life that I have lived. 
I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ shed his precious blood on the cross at Calvary and died for my sins, and I am now willing to turn from my sin. That is true repentance. Making the commitment to turn away from your sin. And you're asking for forgiveness. You said in your holy word, Romans 10, 9, that if we confess the Lord our God and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. Right now, I confess Jesus as the Lord. With my heart, I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. I now accept you, Jesus, into my heart and open the door to having a relationship with you. Please come into my heart and send the Holy Spirit to minister to me. Thank you for providing a way for me to be a child of God through the precious blood of Jesus. Right now I confess Jesus as the Lord. With my heart, I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. I now also ask that the Holy Spirit comes and baptizes me and fills my entire being. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your sacrifice and for providing a way to have eternal life. Amen. I'm going to copy that. And put it in the description box. If anybody wants it in a comment, I'll do that too. Let's copy this. Alright. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth over this video, over the internet connection. And I'm sorry the wording was a little, you know, I wasn't real sure about it. But it was just the way it was typed up. And I plead the blood of Jesus over the message, over myself, my computer, my internet connection. And I declare it shall do me no harm, because no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and against you either. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you, and your devices, and your internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.